develop effective behaviour change strategies, we often need to understand what behaviours by what people influence the outcomes of interest and what factors influence those behaviours. Outcomes, potential target audiences and their behaviours and influences on those behaviours all form part of interacting causal networks, often called systems. Systems thinking is a way of representing a domain of interest, whatever that might be, uh, which recognises that there are multiple causal pathways between things of interest within the domain, leading to potentially complex interactions and feedback loops. And these causal pathways lead the interacting system and its components often to evolve over time. Systems thinking is contrasted with what we may term elemental thinking, which focuses on one or just a small number of causal mechanisms operating on a single occasion. Elemental thinking results in causal statements about single interventions on single occasions. For example, using nicotine replacement therapy in an attempt to stop cigarette smoking increases the chance of success of that attempt. Then systems thinking results in causal statements about the unfolding of events and processes over time with multiple influences at work. So for example, a conclusion from uh, a systems thinking approach might be something like, in a society with strong tobacco control culture and infrastructure, resulting in high rates of attempts to stop smoking but low use of treatments to aid cessation, offering free nicotine replacement therapy together with a high profile marketing campaign and brief advice from healthcare professionals educating smokers about its usage and effectiveness can progressively increase smoking cessation rates for a period of up to five years and reduce health inequalities. So you can see that's a more complex uh, kind of statement, but actually captures rather better the real world situation that we're trying to work in. So what are behavioural systems? As I've said, uh, a system is a causally interacting group of things which we can think of as components, sometimes called factors, sometimes called nodes. These things could be anything from subatomic particles in an atom to people and organisations in an economy. Systems models or systems maps are ways of representing the causal interactions in systems and they're used to predict how the system will behave under a range of hypothetical conditions over a period of time. An example might be a model of how the climate will change over time with differing policies adopted by governments. Behavioural systems models or behavioural systems maps are models in which at least some of the elements are the behaviour of what we call actors. Actors, in this case, are system components that can be individuals, or groups of people, which includes structured groups such as teams, organisations or populations. Behavioural systems models may focus on trying to predict behaviours such as tobacco smoking prevalence in a given population, or they may aim to predict outcomes in which behaviours play an important role such as the prevalence of obesity. There are many different ways in which systems can be characterised using systems models for example, sometimes you hear about stock flow models, um, there's agent-based modelling, there's uh, lots of different ways of doing it. Uh, but one that works particularly well, I think, for uh, behavioural systems maps is to have your components, factors or nodes, representing variables, what we call variables, and then we can look at the causal relationship between those variables. Variables are a particular kind of thing. They're characteristics of things that can take on different values. For example, prevalence of smoking in a population can be a variable which can take on values, say, from 0 to 100%. So the thing that is being characterised here is the population um, and the characteristic we're interested in is the prevalence of smoking which can take on a value from 0 to 100% then the connections between those variables are typically represented as either positive or negative influences. Positive influences are ones in which the value of the input variable goes up, so does the value of the output variable. Negative influences are ones in which if the value of the input variable goes up, the value of the output variable goes down.
You can also have other kinds of influences between variables, non-linear influences, for example, where um, uh, as the value of the input variable goes up for a bit, the output variable goes up, but then once you reach a certain point, uh, it'll go down again. So how do you build behavioral systems maps? Well, the first thing you need to do is to find suitable software. For relatively simple maps, we use PRSM or PRISM because it's quick to learn and has some quite nice features. Perhaps the most useful feature is that it is really easy to have multiple people working on the same map at the same time. The variables in behavioral systems maps can be grouped into a number of types. There are behaviors, including the target behavior or behaviors that you seek to influence. And then there are influences on those behaviors. We divide these up using the combi model. Influences relating to capability, C, opportunity, O, and motivation, M. Then there are what we call outcomes, which can be any state of the world, including any target outcomes that we want to focus on. So for example, in order to achieve an outcome of, let's say, higher healthy life expectancy, we may want to increase the prevalence of eating a healthy diet. This may be influenced by knowledge in the population of how to eat healthily, which is a capability factor, the population's opportunity to eat healthily, and its motivation to have a healthy diet. These factors may be the subject of interventions, such as educational campaigns run by the government and the behaviour of other actors, such as the food industry. I've created a template in PRISM that has these types of variables preset. So the first thing to do is to download that template. You can find a link to this template in the comments section of this video. Now let's get started with PRISM. When you first go to PRISM using prsm.uk in your browser, then you'll see this home screen. And the first thing you do is you click on the Start Now button. Once you've done that, then you'll see the uh, blank workspace. If this is the very first time that you've used PRISM, then it'll take you on a tour through its various facilities and ask you to give yourself a name. And I've given myself the name Robert West, which is why RW appears in this top left corner here. Until you've done that, then you won't be able to uh, enter anything into your model. But once you've done that once, you don't have to do it again. So now you see this blank screen. And now what you have to do is to load up the template we've created and that you will have downloaded. And to load up the template, like any file, you go to the Open button. You go to the file which has the template in. And you'll see it's still a blank screen, but it says in the title, Behavioral Systems Mapping Template. Now, the first thing you'll want to do now is to change that title. You double click on it and uh, delete the text that's there and replace it with your own text. Let's call this um, healthy eating map. Right now, you've got the uh, template in place. And to use that template, just go to where it says settings and you'll see the settings box. The settings box contains a number of different uh, aspects of settings, what it calls factors, which are components of the model or nodes. Uh, in our case, they're variables. There are links, which are the different ways in which the boxes may be connected. And then there's one called networks and one called analysis. So if we go to factors, then to add a factor or a component, all you have to do is to decide what kind of factor it is. And let's say it's a behavior. So you click on the behavior one and it slightly highlights it. Then you click on the plus add factor button and you drag the box to where you want it and you give it a label. And by convention, what we do is to specify who the actor is that this variable relates to and then a colon and then we say what the variable is. So in this case, let's say the actor is the UK adult population. And let's say the variable is the prevalence of eating a healthy diet. And then you click on save and there it is. And it's got this nice blue color to tell you that it's a behavior. Now let's just add another box and let's make this one of the influences on this behavior, such as capability. So we click on the capability style here. We click on add factor. We go to where we want to put it. 
and this will be a capability factor of the UK population, so we can put that in. And let's say it is a level of understanding of what constitutes a healthy diet. Let's add one more factor and let's make this an opportunity factor. And let's put it down here. It's also relating to the UK adult population. And let's just call this opportunity to eat a healthy diet. This opportunity may be encapsulated by things such as the price of healthy foods and so on. Now to add causal links between these factors, we click on the links button here in the settings box and we've preset three types of links. Positive causal influence, which is blue, negative causal influence, which is red, and other causal influence, which is black. And let's choose positive causal influence. And now we just click on the add link button here and we position our cursor over the beginning of the arrow and we drag it to the end of the arrow and you'll see a blue line there. We double click on the arrow and we can give it whatever label we like. In this case, we're just going to give it a plus just to highlight the fact that it's a positive link. And we can do the same thing for the relationship between opportunity and behavior. Let's take another actor here, which is, let's say, the UK government. And this might create an intervention to increase understanding about what is a healthy diet. So we go back to factor here, and we're interested in representing an intervention. So we click on the intervention style, click on add factor, position it here, and we put UK government, colon, and then the variable here, remember we're trying to deal with variables all the time, which are things that can vary from high to low in some way. But in this case, let's say uh, amount spent on educational campaigns on healthy eating. And then we can uh, put a positive causal relationship between that and understanding what is a healthy diet. So we go to links, positive causal relationship, add link and drag the arrow like that. Give it a label, which will be just be a plus. And there we have it. We can add an outcome from the prevalence of eating a healthy diet, which is probably why we're targeting it in the first place. And that would be, let's say, UK healthy life expectancy. So uh, let's go back to factors and let's choose a target outcome. This is the thing we're interested in. Add a factor, put it here. And this would be UK population, healthy life expectancy. Save that. You can see that this has got the shape of a uh, outcome factor and it's got this blue ring around it which is our style for saying that this is a target outcome. And we can create a link here, which will be a positive link like this. So we've got a really simple causal model here and we can add factors as we wish and add links and we can move things around. You should always save what you're doing as you go along and the files are saved locally on your computer. So we could go to save up here and then it opens a dialog box and let's call this uh, healthy eating and that's saved. And now you can load that up again whenever you like. One of the really strong features of the PRISM software is the ability to work collaboratively on systems models. And the way you do that is that the person who's leading on the model will invite other users to join the model as they're working on it. And to do that, they go to the share button here. And this brings up this link, which is highlighted in blue. And all they have to do is to click on copy to clipboard. That link now is in their clipboard and they can send the link by chat or email or in whatever way they like two potential collaborators and then all the collaborators have to do is to click on that link in their browser and it will open up the model 
exactly as the person is working on it and they will appear as a new user here with another little circle with their initials in. Now, if they haven't used the PRISM software before, they will be taken through the induction process and the tour before they can actually get to work on the model. Once they've done that, then the model will appear that the person's working on in the state in which they're working on it. Each of them can then change the model at will and save that model to their own local computer. But remember that once a model is saved on a local computer, it's fixed at that point or that version is fixed. So if they carry on working on it, they'll need to save it again if they want to um, use the updated version. There are lots of other features of PRISM which are really cool. Um, there isn't time to go into them here, but it's worth exploring them. For example, whenever you click on one of these components or factors, as they call them, it actually opens up a box which allows you to write notes about that factor which I think is really important if, for example, you want to create an operational definition of that factor. So your label may be something that's a bit uh, ambiguous, but more comprehensible to a layperson. But you may want to use the notes to say, well, exactly what does that mean in operational terms? So here is a still relatively simple behavioral systems map relating to healthy eating. And what you can see is we've specified as an actor, the UK adult population, and a an target outcome, which would be healthy life expectancy. That's positively influenced by prevalence of eating a healthy diet, which also has an effect on another outcome, which isn't necessarily our target outcome, but is still maybe of interest, which would be annual working days lost to sickness. And then prevalence of eating a healthy diet is positively influenced by amounts spent on healthy foods, and also uh, the prevalence of eating a healthy diet positively influences the amount spent on healthy food. Now, the amount spent on healthy food has three main uh, influences in terms of the COMBI model. The level of understanding of what constitutes a healthy diet, level of motivation to eat a healthy diet, and opportunity to eat a healthy diet. And you can see that uh, we've also got a causal loop in here, that is uh, causal influences which go round in a kind of circle. And we're proposing, I don't know whether this is true or not, but it sort of makes sense, that if level of motivation to eat a healthy diet then increases the amount spent on healthy food, that may well positively increase in another actor, the UK food producers, the intensity of their advertising of healthy foods, which would then positively influence motivation to eat a healthy diet. So you can see you might create a nice positive feedback cycle there. We have interventions from the UK government here, which would be spending on educational campaigns about healthy eating, level of restrictions on advertising unhealthy foods, and levels of subsidy of healthy palatable foods. So that's a simple example of a behavioral systems map. If you like, you can pause the video and just look at it at your leisure and then perhaps see if you can recreate this map using the instructions in this video. So that's a brief introduction to behavioral systems maps and how to create them using PRISM and a template designed for the purpose. This is only one way of doing it and as you gain experience in creating maps, you may develop your own solutions. The main thing to note is that these kinds of systems maps are imprecise and they're not really suitable for quantitative modeling. They're tools for thinking about behavioral systems in a way that goes beyond simple binary causal relationships.